Did you choose to ride felt because Triathlon Dan rides a felt? I had the bike before Triathlon Dan. Oh yeah. That. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to run through this week on the vlog my race bike from last year. Go through a few of the positives with the bikes, and negatives, and also some changes I've made, especially over the last sort of 12 months to the bike to look for those little performance gains. So it's a felt IA 2020. Bought it in March 2020. So just before COVID hit. So I didn't actually get to race it much in 2020. The bike itself came with Altegra Di2. I think it's R800 Altegra. It comes with uh, TRP um, hydraulic brakes and it also came with Reynolds um, 58 front and 62 back. In terms of like where this comes in triathlon bikes and like high end bikes, it's very much like a mid tier bike I'd say. It retailed for 5,400 at the time when I bought it. So when you're looking at some of the other bikes which are 10,000 plus, it's, um, I'd say it's a relatively affordable superbike. Some of the changes I've made, so I'll start at the back, which probably makes the most sense. Um, I obviously put a disc on, this is a parkour's disc. Um, potentially might be changing the wheels this year, that's undecided yet. Um, parkour disc, I've got obviously the Altegra. I'm running an 11, I think it's an 11.23 on the back here, so that was actually set up for California. I'm using a Dura Ace, uh, Shimano Dura Ace chain, and then at the front, it had an 11, not 11, it had a 53.39. Yeah, so I've upgraded to a 56.42. The reason for that being um, mainly for chain line efficiency, but also for um, some of those faster cor uh, courses for some of the fast sections where you do have that little tailwind it means that I can put it in the 5611 and still kind of pedal um, whereas what I was finding with the 5311 was I was going sort of 55 60k an hour with a tailwind and I was doing 110 just to try and keep on the power um, which some would say is a waste of time but when you're racing, you kind of just want to be able to put that power down the whole time. So, crank length I'm riding is 165. Um, again, the bike came with 170, and actually I switched that out. It was literally the first thing I did when I got the bike. I had an Altegra 165, so I literally switched that straight away. Um, I find that works really well for me. I find that, Especially because I'm on a large frame, which I haven't said yet, but it's a, a large 56 frame. Um, and I'm not the tallest guy in the world, but I've got really, I've got a really long torso and really short legs. So I find that with the 165s, it does give me the ability to go up ever so slightly on the saddle um, and get me into a slightly better position. Um, I'm talking like, yeah, millimeters, but everything, every little helps. So. Um, yeah, that's really good. Some of the other changes I've made, obviously I've got the parkours on the front as well, so that is the 80, I think it's an 80 mil um, front wheel, and that's a chrono. Uh, again, I might be changing that, uh, unsure yet. And then on the front end, we have a aluminium base bar, um, which came with felt standard extensions and cuts. And I originally moved into the Drag to Zero uh, Ergo extensions with a Revolver Monocup. Um, and then I'm just using the, these are like prototype bars that Drag to Zero aren't selling yet, which is kind of a more clean looking cup into extension. Um, with, I put the mount in the middle where I would hold a bottle cage facing backwards for hydration. With that, I've got the Project 76 uh, Garmin mount and I've got the Garmin 520 Plus, I think it's called, or 520 Edge or something like that. Um, but yeah, that does exactly what you need with it. It's got maps. Um, it's 2019 now, so it's almost three years old and it's still working fine. Battery life is good, so. Uh, I've also got the Garmin Vector 3s as my power um, source on the bike. Um, again, I found them really easy to use, easy to switch between bikes, um, and haven't had that many issues. If anything, I think they read a little bit high, um, but yeah, they give, you, they give you some numbers, so that's the important thing. So on the saddle, the bike actually came with an ISM, is it an ISM 1.0, I think it is? Yeah, ISM PS 1.0. I had one of those saddles, I used it for two years on the bike, and then the front nose of one of the sides collapsed. 
So I've actually got a the exact same saddle again, but it's actually a blue demo saddle. So one that they, like a lot of people use like bike fits. And I the reason I got a demo saddle is that it was just basically a cheap part. So um, it saved me sort of spending full price on a new saddle. In terms of what I think about the saddle, sometimes I get along with it really well. Other times I do, I have had like a couple of sores, um, a bit of discomfort moving around, that sort of stuff. Um, overall, I think the split nose is really good for me. Um, and I know a lot of people use the 3.0, I think there might even be a 4.0 out now. Um, so I definitely think that is one of the upgrades I might look to change. I'm running uh, on both the front and back GP 5000s, the tubeless version. Um, I had them set up about three weeks before Outlaw Half last year and I haven't changed them yet. Um, so they will have to be uh, inspected and possibly uh, new tyres put on before race season, especially if I'm going to use these again. I just before California did a the old super glue fix on the wheel. So just fill the crack with super glue because I had a couple of little slits in the tyre. Um, but I haven't had any punctures or anything on them. Um, I don't even think I have had a sort of a slight puncture and seal. I think they've literally been pretty robust. And in terms of performance, I think they are in term, like really, really good in terms of performance, but also really high in terms of uh, puncture resilience. Um, I think you can get faster tyres, but you're talking very, very small differences in terms of performance there. And I think, especially when you're racing like Ironman, the less likely you have to get off your bike and try and put a tube in or put some CO2 in and all that sort of stuff, the, the better really. I'll go through a couple of positives and negatives about the bike and then what I will do is quickly go through a few little changes I'm going to make this year. So, some of the positives I found with this bike, with a lot of other bikes in a similar price range, it handles really, really well and also it is a fast bike. Um, is it the fastest bike in the world? Probably not, um, because it is one of those more mid-range bikes, but in terms of being an elite age grouper and a new pro, I think it kind of ticks all the boxes. In the wind tunnel, it tested pretty well. From my experience, it's been a pretty fast bike, and in terms of the frame shape and all of that, it's exactly the same as the more high-end uh, I felt I they have. Another thing I like about the bike is how just basically really easy uh, the front end is for me to adjust. I'm on the more aluminium base which basically has a flat bar here and then a round stem um, and the, the perks of that is just obviously to get tilt in the, in the TT bar extensions you haven't got to worry with spaces or anything you just can kind of rotate and clamp on. Um, so that's really, really easy to adjust. For the most part, it's got some really good options in terms of hydration, storage. So you have got this bento box here, which does go down into the frame. Um, the, there's a couple of issues with that, which I'll talk in a bit, but in terms of options for gels, etc., that is really, you know, you've got that option, whereas on some other TT bikes you don't. On the rear, you've got this box as well. Um, again, it fits a lot, so in terms of I rode most of the first half of the year with spares um, in the back while racing and you could fit quite easily a tube, a couple of CO2s, some bike levers, that sort of stuff. So, and that will just fit really comfortably in there. In terms of like overall performance of like the bike, I think it handles really, really well. I've been using the 80 front and the disc on the back and I think it's almost a testament to maybe the wheels but also the bike in terms of how well it does handle. It's, there's no sort of like wobble in the bike at all. It's very, it is very stiff, it does, it does hold position really well. I am like 75, 76 kgs so I am slightly heavier than most people so I can definitely lean into the wind a little bit more um, but in terms of performance even on a windy day I'd quite happily go out with the AC on the front and a disc. So that, that's really good. In terms of obviously other things that I've really liked, I've started using these demo drag to zero bars on the bike. Um, I find that they're really, really comfy because basically instead of you kind of resting your elbow or the top, the bottom of your forearm and then just grabbing off the tops of your bars, um, I'm actually able to rest the whole of my forearm right up to my wrist. Um, and that just means that when you're like riding for a long time, you can just sort of almost fall into the fall into the time trial bars a little bit more. Um, takes the pressure off the shoulders, 
and I just find that overall I feel a lot more comfortable. So with that being said, it is only a mid-range bike and there is a few negatives. Not that many, so I'm not going to slate it that badly. <laughs> but there is a few little things that I think possibly might be what they're looking to um, upgrade and I think felt have a new bike in, well I know that they have a new bike coming out, I think it was meant to be this year but it might be coming out next year now. And I think that the negatives I found on this bike are the things that they've obviously put straight into practice and they're going to put into the new bike. Um, so the first one being hydration, um, other than a bottle cage here, there is actually no other hydration on the bike, there's no, um, no bolts on the down tube, um, so what I've had to do is obviously mount a bottle between my arms, I normally race with a bottle behind the saddle as well, and then have a more aero bottle on the frame. So what I think the new bike has is more of that sort of hydration bladder within the system, which will obviously fill the front end somewhere. Um, and I think that's just a really good addition for some of the new bikes and something that I wish I kind of had just to store a little bit more fluid. Other issues with this bento box, for example, is that the DI2 junction has to be stored in it because of this logistics and how access accessible it is to be able to charge. So that then also uses up some room. So in terms of how much I can actually fit in there, I think you could probably only get maybe three or four gels, which isn't actually that much when you're trying to ride a bike for 180K. And other, other things that I find a little bit um, that could be improved on this bike is that obviously it has its aluminium sections at the front end here. Although it was a positive in terms of being able to fit on the bike, it's also a slight negative in terms of the weight. And I'd say in terms, like, when you sort of lift up other time trial bikes, I reckon this is probably on the slightly heavier side. Um, I don't know the exact weight, but I, I'd probably guess at around sort of 9.5 to 10 kilos. To be honest, that's probably all the negatives I have. It's been a really, really good bike in terms of performance, and it is a very sort of high performing bike regardless of the price point i think it's a very affordable bike that if you are wanting to take triathlon a little bit more seriously and you don't want to go and spend 10 plus thousand pounds on a bike i think it's a really good sort of not entry level bike but mid-range bike that you can kind of upgrade to and actually get some really, really good results on um, in terms of what i want to try and do this season on this bike just to increase performance a little bit would be Trying to change this front end, I say front end, change the front um, chain ring into a one by system. So get rid of the front derailleur, um, put on a probably a 58 or a 60 tooth chain ring. Um, and the reason for doing that is a lot of the races I'm going to be doing the first half of the year are pretty flat. As I said before, just having those slightly bigger gears is always better, but also if you're going to be spending a lot of time traveling at faster speeds, the more you can stay in the middle at the back and have that sort of flat line efficiency, the more watts are saved. And we, I'm obviously talking about like marginal watts, but you know, every two or three watts does sort of add up quite a lot. And also losing this front mech does, um, definitely does lose a few, few watts as well because it's quite chunky. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is swap out the chain for a wax chain. Again, marginal sort of couple of watt gain. Every sort of small thing you can do. I think for training purposes, I'm still going to be using just your standard um, Shimano chains. But what I want to look to do is swap them out just before race day or just before the event um, and try and gain those little percents. Other than that, I'm going to be keeping the front end pretty standard for now in terms of what, it, um, in terms of my position, but also how I feel on it, it feels really stable. The only other thing I might look to do is potentially use a different wheel set, um, but that is not 100% yet. A lot of pros nowadays using ceramic bottom brackets and jockey wheels, is that something you're interested in upgrading? So ceramic bottom bracket, yes, I think that's kind of a, I say an easy, easy fix, but like that's something you can do quite simple. Um, and I think it's something that I probably should look to invest in. Um, with everything in terms of bikes, like there is a, a price tag on it. Um, but I'm looking to, you know, save a few watts here and there. So that's definitely something I'm going to look to do. 
With the pulley wheels at the back, I've got kind of multiple like opinions. So a lot of people will go for like the ceramic speed, like oversize. Um, I think a couple of other co companies do like covered up ones. Um, the bigger the pulley wheel, the tendency for them is they are they become a little bit stiffer and they don't have so much wobble in them. The positive behind having some of these smaller ones is actually as you're shifting throughout the rear cassette, they do bend and move a little bit better. So there's a potential that right if you are in the most efficient chain line, an oversized pulley wheel has a potential like really big benefit. But as soon as you like are going up a climb or something like that, you kind of lose that benefit quite quickly. Um, so oversized pulley wheels is something I'm not completely sold on at the moment. I'm not 100% sure if I need it or not. Um, but in terms of like a ceramic bottom bracket, 100%. So synchro shift. <laughs> um, so when I used to ride a track speed concept, um, the first sort of uh, DI2 bike I ever rode, it had I can't remember what the exact term for it was, but it basically had four shifters on the TT bars, but also four shifters, a two on each handle. Um, when I moved to the Felt IA in 2020, it came with synchro shifting. So you basically just have one blip at the end of both bars, which shifts down and up, but also you only have on your right hand side shifting up and down again. The, I guess the perks of Having that is simplicity in terms of like athlete, you haven't got to think as much. In terms of slight climbing courses, there is, when you're shifting from the big front ring to the smaller ring, there is sometimes, you know, it kind of shifts without you knowing when it's going to shift. And I think I've got a lot better because obviously the more I've ridden the bike, the more you kind of can feel when the bike's going to shift and you kind of know exactly like the speed you're traveling or the power you're going that sort of thing and, and you can kind of tell right the next shift is going to go into the small ring or the next shift is going to go back up into the big ring um, but when I started riding this bike I found that quite difficult I'd be sort of riding along and all of a sudden it would jump um, but I guess that's kind of just a personal preference it does definitely take the thinking away from you you haven't got to think right have I got to shift out the small ring to the big ring um, but potentially, if I get rid of the front mech anyway, it's just going to be a simple up down anyway. So um, that that problem gets solved pretty quick. In terms of performance and bikes, I think I think felt, what felt have done really really well is they've just done the simple things correctly. You know, it's it looks fast. It definitely tests fast in terms of its aerodynamics. Um, it obviously performs well. So if you think of someone like Daniela Reef, who's won Kona four times. She's obviously proved that the geometrics of this frame is fast. So in terms of where I would place it and whether I would buy another felt myself, like 100%, I think it's a great bike. Um, I think there's more positives than negatives with this one, especially the mid-range one. Um, I'd be really interested to ride the felt IAFRD, I think it's called, is it? Well, uh, might yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> well, might know. Um, and actually know what the, the slight changes are because I know that they obviously moved to a carbon front end. Um, the carbon they use on the actual frame is slightly better quality, so therefore slightly lighter. Um, but obviously with all of those things, there is a, a price caveat. So just for those small upgrades, you're looking at thousands of pounds, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but also other great other upgrades like moving from Altegra to Dura Ace. Um, I've heard some big things about Dura Ace. Um, I've, I've never ridden it myself, so there's definitely, if I was to look to, to ride another felt, I think there's some exciting things that I'd like to try, and I'm quite excited to see what their next iteration of the felt IA will look like. Sweet. Cool, that'll do. I chatted away too much.